Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Owen Talks Drum Corps. We are on episode nine, baby. The Drum Corps season is over, but the podcast is not, ladies and gentlemen. Remember to go follow the Instagram that is Owen Talks Drum Corps. Subscribe on YouTube that is Owen Does Band Things. And then follow on Spotify that is also Owen Talks Drum Corps. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our question of the week today is, are you going to any DCI camps? And if so, which ones? Hit me down in the comment section down below. Let me know where you're going. I want to hear what everyone's doing uh, this November and October in preparation for the DCI 2025 season. Love to hear your comments. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, my guest today is currently on the music education path at the University of Texas. He is a former Hendrickson High School band member. He has marched with the Bluecoats in 2023 as baritone and as bass trombone in the amazing performance of Bump. And he is currently one of the drum majors for the world 2024 champion Bluecoats. Please welcome my guest today, Tony Gomez. What's up, you guys? Good to see y'all. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And, uh, uh, you know, just get answer some questions here. Oh, yeah, dude. I know the Blue Coast community is pumped, bro. Y'all got a dub. Y'all be Blue Devils. Y'all went over the top. Just exceeded expectations. How does it feel, man? How does it feel to be a world champion? I mean, there's no other feeling like it, I think uh the blue coast have been long due for a championship uh ever since 2016 so i've just been oh yeah putting the grind in putting the grindstone and just getting to work and i totally thought the members did a great job and i probably wouldn't have done what we did this season without them so it i mean it's all love to the members i'm just the guy that waves their hands to keep everybody <laughs> right <laughs> dude that's awesome though that's awesome because i mean like you said you're the guy who waves their hands but also all these guys and girls, like, in a sense, they have to kind of look up to you. And you're such a, like, big role model in into the Blue Coats organization at this point, you know? Or led them all into this path. Obviously, we're all, or all of them are putting in hard work. But give yourself props, man. That's a that's a big role to fulfill, man. World champion drumming. Yeah. That's a, it's a big role. Yeah, it was fun. Yes. I, I won't lie. It was fun. It was really fun. And, um just like my team, my team of team hands was just awesome. And I give them props, but um, yeah, it was fun. It was a good shout season. out, shout out to the, to the blue coat drum major team. Shout out. Yeah. Yes, sir. All righty. Well, how was your, how was your season this, this year? What was the favorite thing you did? Any locations, memories, any of that? How was it? Man, I'd probably have to say my like most favorite thing that happened this season was probably that San Antonio free day after um, the Southern Western Championships in San Antonio. And I was just like, so my family came down and they're, awesome. you know, they went to go see the performance and all that good stuff. And then they had an Airbnb. And then like, as soon as I got off the bus to get picked up, I was just like, okay, I can't do anything right now. I'm just like, and so, like, we went back to their Airbnb. I ate food, and I just, like, crashed until, like, probably, like, 3 in, like, the afternoon. So I was just, like, well, we woke up at, like, 9-ish, got to the bus, did laundry and all that stuff for, like, our free day. And then we went to San Antonio at the Riverwalk and all that stuff. And so my parents picked me up there, and it was just, like, all right, I'm not doing anything the rest of the day. I'm just, like, I'm going to sleep. I'm going to nap. I'm not, like, I'm going to eat food. And then... After that day, then we can get back to work. So it was really nice. I think that was probably like my most memorable moment just because of the fact that it was just like so rewarding after what we had done on Saturday. Yeah, man. And even leading up to that, man, that that was a lot of a uh, lot of I mean, I wouldn't consider surprises, but some people would uh, yeah. just shocking moments and stuff. Um, but yeah, man, a lot of people will say that actually that San Antonio was their favorite moment, which is pretty cool to put a cute pretty cool to hear especially coming from a, a texas native here <laughs> yep 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 for sure dude and then the alamo dome i'm assuming catch me up you have made state for high school yes i have so i was probably like closer to like 10 performances in the alamo dome so it was just like 
we knew what was going on, like being the Texas native that I am here in Austin, it's just like, all right, well, we know what we're doing. Like, it's not going to, it's not, it's not going to be anything different. And so I knew that going into the Alamo Dome, like the sound and like everything and how it travels in the dome, it's just different than when it's outside in like a, a stadium. So it was really cool. I enjoyed it a lot. I think having the ability to like know exactly, okay, this is how it's going to sound like now, now I kind of know where everything is at. And so it was really helpful for the performance because we did like break the record for the San Antonio championships. That's insane. So That's a big one, bro. That's a big one. Well, talking about San Antonio and Southwestern Championships, I wanted to ask, uh, would you mind talking to me about the vibe with the core uh, beating the Blue Devils uh, leading into DCI Southwestern Championship? How was that? It was rewarding. I think the blue the Blue Devils organization is amazing, and like everything that they do over there is just like in, in incredible. It's like no, it's like none other, you know. And that's like the Blue Devil way. And so that to go up there and to like just be ourselves and perform and just do what we have been doing, it was just. very rewarding because we knew that we had a product on our hands that could really, really take it all the way. And so like our first performance together was at, at broken arrow. And that was like almost halfway through the season. And so it was just like, it was awkward per se, just because of the fact that like, all right, this was the first time everybody was somewhat getting together. So I think we were missing like a couple chords, but like most of like the top five, top six were like there and we were performing together for the first time. And so I remember, I think, I don't think that we went on last. I think it was some something weird. It was like, Mm-hmm. I think us, or no, it was BD, us, then like Carolina Crown or something like that. But it was just like some random order. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And Yeah, so I'm pretty we, sure that we was got to like, happening. yeah, we got to like see some of their show at the, at the beginning before we had to kind of like lock in to, you know, win the tunnel. That's what we say, win the tunnel. And so, Hey. um. I think it was just, it was rewarding. I think they put out a great product. We also put out a great product and it was just like, okay, we know that we have the better products. Just like, what can we do to make this even better than it already is? And like, we knew that the Blue Devils were going to, you know, get on the grindstone and make sure that they were trying to put in tooth and nail to try to find out like, okay, how can we make this more clean? And so our mindset was, how can we make it cleaner? You know? And so the vibe was really, really good. Um, We had a lot of momentum going into it just because of the fact that we were, we had won every single show that we were at already. And so it was just like that good momentum of just like, okay, let's just keep the train rolling. Like it, it's not going to stop until like April 11th or not April, August, August 11th. Mm Um, so it was just like, it was that good momentum and we knew that it had to keep going no matter what, no matter what the road was ahead. It was just like, all right, we're going to do this. We're going to make it right. And it's just going to be the greatest product. And so I thought that showed up a lot in, uh, finals night. So, yeah. -hmm. no yeah man that that was uh I personally, again, I don't think it was shocking because I remember talking about this like at, at the beginning when I started my podcast and everything. I was like, man, I am getting a lot of 2016 vibes from the Blue Coats, dude. And I was like, I don't remember exactly my early season predictions, but I was like, I think they're taking it, but like Blue Devils is chasing them. Like at the end of the day, the, the cool part of Drum Corps this season was that nobody like in in no like weird fashion but like the blue devils did not get bad it was other people were just getting really good really fast and so at the end of the day it, it's a competition but also like it, it's cool to see that like cores are starting to pick up same thing with boston like y'all have y'all the blue coats and boston have been at it at it at it for for first place and like seeing one of y'all like achieve it is pretty cool to see man Yeah, it So, was exciting. I definitely, I definitely thought that everything went well and we just kind of stuck to our guns, you know, and just kept at what we were doing and didn't really focus on what other people were doing. And we just knew that we're going to do the best that we could, no matter what the outcome was, no matter what happened. It was just like we knew that we were going to make the best product. exactly. Yeah. And I remember it was later in the season. 
Uh, it was like a clip that was posted on socials. And it was basically, I don't remember exactly who, but you might remember. I'm not sure. But it was like they were speaking on how you can't get emotionally attached or or something like that during the performance and more like focus on the actual performance, which sounds a little bit of uh, if like if you kind of tie it into what we're talking about here, it's one of those things where you can't be thinking, oh, we got to beat the Blue Devils. It's like we got to be the best we can, you know? Exactly. And that's yeah. what it all comes down to. It's like, yes, it's a competition. You're trying to get ahead of the other people that you are going against. But it's more of the fact of like, we're going to do our show the best. Doesn't matter what everybody else thinks or what everybody else is doing. It's just like we're focusing on what we can do as the blue coats and our show changes everything. And so I thought we did a really good job with that, like through all the shows. I felt like there were blips and moments when like emotion got to us and we looked at the scores and we were like, oh, okay, we're like ahead by like point something. And it was just like it the scores don't matter. The scores don't matter. It's just we're gonna focus on what we're gonna do to be the best blue coats in the world. And so I thought we did that and it showed. Yeah, definitely deserved, man. Definitely deserved. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask, is there any cool stories you have of like a rehearsal or a comp day or any of that? Yeah. So it was like one of our last tour days. Uh, we were in, I think, Pennsylvania, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and so that day, it was just kind of like raining on and off and on and off. And so it was just like, all right, so we have to go inside. Oh, there's a lightning alert. So we have to go inside. Okay, we can go back outside. Okay, now we can go. We have to go back inside because of something. So it was just like a lot of back and forth between that day. And so during ensemble time, these clouds started to roll in a little bit. And so it was just like... We got to rehearse, but it wasn't like a true rehearsal. It was just like very like, okay, we just got to be cognizant of the rain and like what it's going to do. But um, for like the most part, it just kind of like drizzled the whole rehearsal. And it just like kept going and going for like the entire rehearsal until they called it. But like during that rehearsal, like we were getting stuff done, like rain, sleet, snow. We were out there. We were trying our best, like doing what we could. Like the drums had their rain slips on and like we're drumming and like, the brass players were out there playing. Of course, like the front ensemble was a little bit different just because of their instruments and like the environment. But I mean, we were still getting reps in and like trying to dial things in timing wise. And so, and we took a couple of breaks to just like have fun basically and just like be ourselves. Like um, I remember one of our techs uh, and I and some of the other uh, drum corps guys were like, throwing a football during one of the breaks just to kind of see what the weather was doing. And so it was just like, it was a good moment of like, yes, we can get work done, but we can also have fun and do those things at the same time. And so it was really nice to just have that moment with each other and just kind of like, all right, we're, we're getting work done and we're getting better, but like we can also have the humility of like being ourselves and like having fun. And so I think finding that good balance of like, yes, we got to get things done and yes, things are going to get hard, but like, but we're going to have fun during those times and we're going to like build momentum and build those relationships with each other because our relationships in drum corps are last like our lives. And so you're going to remember everybody like just from the moment that you met them to like the moment that they passed away or like, it's exciting. So I thought that was a really like awkward, but fun rehearsal. Yeah, that's sick, man. That's sick. It, it, it be those rehearsals that are like, either it's raining or it's like, or even like those uh, like super hot rehearsals where it's just like false hype. Like those yeah. are the rehearsals that like show the bonds that y'all have. Um, I know Kylie, the previous uh, person I interviewed, she was talking about how with Crossman, they had a rehearsal where it was like the uh, the field was like super muddy and they were just like sliding and like, just throwing themselves in the mud like it was like she, she described it as it was just fun like literally just like being humans with each other um which exactly. is cool to see because like it, like you said again it, it's like you know how to hard, uh, work hard and you're showing it too but you can also have fun and build those relationships which is like i personally think is also one of the bigger things in drum corps and in marching band in general that like just building relationships, building friendships that will la last forever and all that. Yep. That's, That's cool to about. see, man. That's cool to see, man. Well, how was getting to to win? How was getting to to hold that trophy, man? 
you hear retreat, you hear first place, gold medal. How was it? Yeah. I mean, I still relive it and just like in the moment of just like being there and like noticing that like, oh my gosh, like we just did that. Like we won and it was just so surreal and it's like hard to like think about. But in the moment I was just like, yeah, yeah. And it was, it was no feeling like none other, like just holding the big trophy. First of all, that thing is like massive and heavy and it's just like, <laughs> ow, but um, it was just, I really enjoy watching the other members have fun at, like during retreat and like to see their faces and to see them like tearing up and like just truly seeing the emotion of like, oh my God, we just won like, and we're the best in the world. And it was just, it was very nice to see that. And it was very nice moment for me just because of the fact that I was able to show them the direction of like, all right, we're going to do this. It's going to happen. And it did. And it was like, so rewarding for everybody, just because of the fact of how hard we worked and the tireless hours of like, okay, are we actually going to be able to, or like, it's hot. It's, it's like a hundred degrees. It's humid, like little rock, like it sucks. And it's just, how do we move past those times? And we definitely did. And we did it with like all intentions of working the hardest and making sure that it showed up and it did. And so it was very, very promising for me just in the fact that I'm, I still have two years of drum corps left and hopefully the blue coach brought me back, but um, it's just, it's amazing. And so I probably wouldn't want to be anywhere else just because of the fact of like the humans that they are and like the emotion that they showed. And it's, it's exciting. And it was really exciting to see everybody smile and just have fun, especially our staff too, just because, you know, they put in the work, they put in the hours also. And so it was really cool. And uh, hopefully we get to do it again, but we'll see. Yeah. Dang. That is amazing to hear, man. Again, congrats to you, bro. To you, to, I mean, all the blue coats out there, uh, even the alumni, man, because like nothing is done without their, their past and whatnot. Um, yep. But yeah, man, that, that is awesome to hear. I I mean, that's literally so kind, humble of you of just like, like, yes, you were like hyping yourself up, but also like mainly you were just thinking of your friends and like acknowledging that like their hard work and your hard work all paid off, which is so cool to see, man. That is so that is props to you, man. Not everyone does that. And that's that's an amazing thing to see from a human. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah, dude. Well, the victory run, man. I saw you vibing up there. How was it? How was the victory run, man? I mean, I probably, like, it was just fun. You know, like, there there wasn't any other emotion, but it was just, like, fun and, and exciting. And just, like, noticing how big the crowd, like, was, like, after your finals retreat and, like, who stayed to watch us. And it was just, like, you know, like, not a lot of people wanted to stay until 12 a.m., 1 a.m. to watch another band performance, but, like, people in the stands were just there and vibing and, like, having fun. And so, like, I think that translated between, like, the stands to us because we were just so, like, it was it was fun and it was exciting and it was just, like, so much emotion and we could, like, portray what we were trying to do. And, like, it was just, it was cool. Like, I never would have thought for Victory Run to be like that just because it was, like, my first one, you know, and, like, and like I was saying before, like, hopefully we get to do that again. But it's like, it was it was exciting. Like, everybody had a good time. There was no stress. It was, like, just so relaxed. And it was just, like, go be yourselves and be the blue coats and just do what you, like, just what you do, you know? And so, like, seeing the staff, seeing the alumni, seeing the crowd, like, it's hard to, like, just because, like, I'm, like, forward and it's just like, oh. But hey. um, yeah, exactly. It's just like, oh, hey, thanks. Appreciate <laughs> it. But it's and just hearing them from behind me, it was just like they got so loud and like I was screaming and blue. And it was just it's so exciting because like I'm I'm like staring at everybody and in front of me and they're like excited and they're like, let's go. And it's it was really cool. 
I really enjoyed it. I hope everybody else really enjoyed it. And I thought like all the GoPro runs that we got to do like during that uh, victory run, it was cool to see everybody like, all right, what's up? This is how we do things here at the Blue Coach. So it was really cool. That's awesome. That is incredible, man. Yeah. I mean, it is a whole different perspective. Like you're saying, instead of like seeing the crowd, you're literally just, you're literally just feeling them and hearing them, which is a crazy thing to do because I mean, you still have to do your job and you're like still vibing and like you, you see your friends being happy. That is incredible. Man. That is awesome. <laughs> well, it's definitely I have, fun you what's up? It's definitely fun. Oh man, I bet so. I bet so. I do have a question, man. How was it getting to wear that uni, bro? The Shaco <laughs> coming back. Yes, sir. How was it? it? I mean, it's a lineage, you know, like it's something that not a lot of people will or understand or get to wear just because of like, there was one, Willie Beanstra back in 2013 to 2015. He's the only white knight. And so knowing that we were me and Catherine, my other head drum major or my other drum major beside me, were gonna get to wear these uniforms, it was very humbling and exciting and just like the memorabilia of like, wow, like this is like one of a kind uniform, like not a lot of people are gonna get to wear or see or like touch or like do anything. And so having the permission, first of all, from Willie to just like, all right. I think this is this is going to be a good year. I think we should just bring back these uniforms. And so it was very honoring, per se. Like, it was just very like, okay, we got a job to do, and we're going to be, like, the people to look at just because of the uniforms that we're wearing. And, like, so I think it was it was cool, and it was exciting, and I had a good time wearing it. Like, I would have never imagined to, like, wear the helmet and wear the and wear the uniform just because of the fact that there was only one there like one made for him and him only and so to have one made like for me and Catherine it was very enjoyable and um it was really cool taking off the helmet like flipping it around and stuff so. <laughs> legendary man legendary yeah yeah dang that's that's cool that's cool well I do have one last question for your year uh here with the blue coast at 2024 what is one significant thing that changed your life from the show changes everything mm. Mm, it's a good question bring the bring the show title back <laughs> um i think probably just being a part of that group like the 2024 blue coats will never happen again like that's it that's written in history now and i think what changed my life so much or changed my everything was the people that i got to spend with the summer with and they were fantastic they worked their butts off they endured a lot of stuff and i think they i mean they they're rock stars every single one of them no matter what the day was no matter how the day was going to be it was they're going to put a smile on their face and they're going to get, they're going to get their stuff done. They did. And so it was very nice to work in that environment just because of the fact that everybody was working towards the same goal and the same energy of like, we're going to be the best blue coats, not to win a championship, not to win a gold medal, not to have that victory one, but to be the best blue coats there's ever been. And I thought they did a really good job of that. Um, and I think this show and just this idea will be, really like put in the history books per se and it'll be a staple of drum corps for a couple of years so i'm really happy about that and to do it with the group that we had and it was very special but yeah nice i mean yeah definitely definitely gonna be in the history books man not only winning but again beating the blue devils uh <laughs> i i'm not exactly sure what the nip it is but i know that there was a lot of broken records like the the southwestern championship one uh you were talking about uh just a bunch of stuff that man like so early on in the season just like spiked up to the moon on on all those creative things 
Yeah, it was, I mean, it's exciting. Like, let's see, we got our first um, Brazali, I think that's the visual award. Uh, we got our first Jim Ott a brass award, uh, our highest uh, scoring record for finals uh, for Blue Coats. And so it's exciting. Like, we got to do this thing all together and like break these different records and like do these things and like bring home our first odd, our first Brazali. And like enjoy these things together, and it was just like exciting because no other group was was going to be able to celebrate like ours just because of the fact that it was the first time doing a lot of these things, and it was our second like uh what is it championship ever, and so I loved every core, and I love every core just because of like the humans that they are and the drum core and the history that they bring, um, and it's. It's just exciting because we get to add more history to what everybody else is putting in to the bucket. And so, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. All righty. Well, as we know, you also marched or actually kind of marched <laughs> on the field uh, yeah. with the Blue Coats as well in 2023. What is one core memory you have from your 2023 season? Ooh. So I think, uh, I mean, uh, this is, yeah, I, it, it's, it's no brainer. Um, <laughs> we were, when we were learning bump, uh, I was one of the bass trombones on the prop. And so like the whole time they were like figuring out bump, I was just on the prop during visual block, just kind of twiddling my thumbs and just kind of, all right. So I uh, went to lunch. And so it was just, it was cool because like we were just up there the whole time until like part <laughs> six and it was just, it was cool. Cause like we didn't have to really do anything. It was just like, all right, nice. We're just up here vibing, doing our thing, being <laughs> bass trombone, but it was cool at the same time. Cause we got to like blast and like be cool and like have fun and like do the bass bump part of bump. And it's bump was something unimaginable with just like, timing stuff and just like the way everything was added in and like how everybody was like added in like on this duple triple meter at the same time and it was just like very like whoa a lot of math and like a lot of like okay you gotta play in time okay you gotta like speed up on the hands okay now you gotta so it was really cool to like bring together but i think one of the core memories of 2023 was that during vintage blocks when we were learning part five or bump was uh just kind of like all right this is like chillax block relax block we call it we call it sandbagging which is really funny but yeah that's cool that's cool man i remember i swear every year your clip goes viral <laughs> like on either flow flow's instagram or or just like anywhere it, it's always like that 23 was was tony on the prop just vibing and banging on the bass bone. And then this year, the iconic look forward and all that. Uh, yeah. So that's cool to see, man. That's props to you, man. That's a sick, especially like I'm a trauma player as well. That's a sick freaking feature, man. I remember listening it to in person here in Denton at DC Denton. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God. And then I got a uh, really fortunate with uh, a friend I went to Southwestern Championships that year. And I got to watch nice. it again. I was like, let's go. Yeah. I think like there were there were definitely shows that it was just like, oh, that's not good. And then there were shows where they were like, oh, okay, that's like really, really good. But it was, it was like that, like, all right, is it going to be good? Is it not going to be good? Until like the end of the season when it was like, okay, it's going to be good. Like every single time. But yeah. Yeah, always, always a puzzle. Just had to lock it in, but it did. So that that was that was really good. Now talking about twenty twenty three, what's one uh favorite place or or kind of like you said with uh San Antonio with twenty four, uh what's something that you liked about twenty three? I think like going back to twenty three, twenty three was my first year of drum corps like ever. And so, like, getting to, like, do the whole drum corps thing was just very different. And, like, I've never done it before. And trying to figure it out and, like, probably one of the best drum corps in the world. It was just, like, pretty crazy. But um, we had this pre-day in Tennessee. Uh, we went to the, like, Bass Pro Shop Pyramid. 
And so like we got to go there and like do that whole thing. And then we they had like down, like not downtown, but like the strip per se of Tennessee. And so we went to this place called BB Kings and like had barbecue and it was just like really good. And like one of our, or one, yeah, because that year we had two, uh, one of our drum set players actually went on stage and sung a song with the band that was there performing, which is really cool because he did a really good job. And I was like, okay, go, go get it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was really cool. I think that was like one of the cool hype moments of 23. yeah that's cool well talking about your first season what's one thing you or one major difference you saw between high school marching band and your first year drum corps <laughs> Mm. Mm. That's a good question. That's a really good question. I think like high school marching man is very like, okay, you're just there, you know, like you're not doing it for anything. It's just kind of like, it, it's an elective, you know? And so not a lot of people really put their passion and drive into it, but like doing drum corps, everybody loves band. Everybody loves marching band. Like everybody loves doing it. And so I think there's much more of a drive to like do something and to like be a really good group and like create a really finished product rather than in high school. It's just very like, Oh, you know, we're here. It's summer band. Just get into the motions, you know, and just, you know, trying to get to concert band season. So it's just very different. And to take like two, two and a half months of drum core and like almost four months of high school marching band, It's just very different. And so like in high school marching band, it's very like, okay, we're going to like kind of spoon feed you some of some of the material, but in like drum corps, it's like, we're going to learn part one in two days. And then we're going to learn part two in like three, five, three to five days. And then part three in let's say like a week. And then part four is three days. And then we have our first show that weekend. And so It's very like fast paced. You got to get things correct. You got to get to get things correct a little bit more on the first time rather than like, OK, take your time, look at your dot, find it. All right, we're going to march at a slower tempo, more, more or less. But I think that's kind of like the difference, per se, between high school and marching men, high school marching men and drum corps, just because of the fact that it's very high, high fast paced and mar and High school marching band is a little bit more on the, okay, we're going to teach you this a little bit more. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean and it makes sense too because uh again you said like you said it, it's an elective so at the end of the day some of these kids only because they chose band in middle school they just kind of had to go uh into high school with band mm -hmm. and some of those kids again like you were saying might just be looking forward to concert season and not marching man uh so it, i could see i could see why that's a, that's a big difference um That's honestly my biggest thing on why I want to march DCI next year is because, I, don't get me wrong, I love my high school group that I had, but I was starting to find a peak of like, oh, I, I want to do more. I want to do more of this at a higher, higher capacity, higher levels, um, which is something I think a lot of people shouldn't be really scared of uh, when trying out for auditions and, and all that, because At the end of the day, like one core might not fit you, but another one might. And not only that, but it's already at a way higher tempo and 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 speed than what you were doing a couple months ago. Is that something that is kind of correct? I'm assuming. <laughs> oh yeah, it it really is. Like it it truly depends on like what the core is and like what core you pick. Like Blue Coats is way different than Phantom Regiment, and Phantom Regiment's way different than Madison Scouts. And so like trying to find those differences and like what you enjoy doing and it's not going to take like a year to figure out like you might have to figure out okay I tried Phantom Regiment this is not the place for me maybe I need to go somewhere else and so it's finding where you're comfortable and like the process of what you're doing like Blue Coats is way different just because of the fact that uh our visual designer John Vanderkoff um is very like okay like we're gonna put the show together bit by bit And then he's going to make some bigger ideas. And then that's when he finds like, okay, this is how the form is going to move. This is where the props are going to be. And so like, he needs to take some time to like visualize it and put us in our places so that we have, he has the ability to like, okay, 
I need to move this a little bit more up or I need to move this a little more downstage or maybe this should go this way. Maybe this... So it's a whole bunch of like no questions, just do it type thing at the blue coats. And so I feel like there's different, there's different ways of like, okay, the drill designer is going to make the drill and you're going to do it. And then he's going to make small tweaks and that's going to be it. But like Johnny V um, loves to make tweaks a lot. And it's just like day to day. Some sets are going to change day daily. Some sets are going to change like weekly. And it's just kind of like, okay, we got to make sure that we're doing the changes correctly. So like, I think during finals week, I had a change at the end of the show where like the Z pool right at the end when everybody went into that curve, it was just like, we had to make that different. And so he changed it. We learned it in the week of finals and it was just like, okay, this is how it's going to be. It needs to be perfect and it's going to be great. And it was. And so It was very just interesting to find, like figure out and like see just from like a performer's perspective and like um, a drum major's perspective because it's so different. Um, just in the fact of like Johnny V is going to move you in your place when you're a performer, but in like the drum major position, you should know every count of what he's trying to do and you should be able to like, this is this measure, this is who this who plays and like what the drum beats are. And so it's it's really cool to get like both sides of it because like you can figure out okay the, they the drum corps needs like a break really quick to just kind of like reset and then get back out there, so it's really cool. Nice. Yeah, that's that's a uh, I guess it's another thing uh, back to the other question with like differences between high school and drum corps. High school band, if there's tweaks, it's like one tweak and then like kind of move on where as in drum corps, you're like you're talking about, it's a lot more and a lot quicker. Um, again, it has to be perfect or near near perfect first couple of tries, because um, if not, it's not going to be ready for a show. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. yeah. Alrighty. Well, I have uh, a couple uh, questions left here before our episode wraps up, but I wanted to ask what's something you would tell your past self um, or your younger self um, about marching band or drum corps uh, now looking at where you are? Man, these are some pretty good questions. Um, I think... learning about drum corps and doing drum corps for the first time, it was very like, all right, you like, this is going to be way different from high school to drum corps, but it's going to be different in a good way, just because of the fact that we're going to be able to do something together. And I, I said this earlier, like it's, it's something that a lot of people love to do and love doing. And like high school is just different just because of the fact like it's elective. And so I enjoyed it so much and the difference between both. But I think if I had to go back and tell myself something is don't wait to do it. If you want to do it, do it. You don't have to start at the top, first of all. Like you don't have to start like BD, Blue Coats, Boston, like maybe start. Madison Scouts, Blue Knights, they're, they're, they're great, they're great drum corps. And it's not something where you have to be like, oh, I have to start at the top. You know, you really don't like Pacific Crest is another great core. Uh, who else? Santa Clara Vanguard, they're coming back off a, off a, a season where they weren't marching. And it's just like, there are other groups out there that are, that are performing at the highest quality, the same as the top three, top four drum corps in the world. And so I think it just doesn't, you don't have to wait for it. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, there are like things that are going to be like, okay, maybe we need like some help. But there are scholarships and Drum Corps International has scholarships that are allowed to like give out. And some alumni, um, alumni corporations for the Drum Corps, like they have scholarships for other people also. And so I think it's just, you shouldn't have to wait if you want to do it. Don't don't trick yourself into being like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do it. Just do it. Go on your instinct. If you want to do drum corps, you should do drum corps. And so when I was going into drum corps and doing that kind of thing, I was very hesitant um, just in the fact of like, I've never done it before and it was just a new thing. But you don't know if you like it or not if you don't try it. And so I think 
just do a season. It doesn't have to be at the Blue Coats. It doesn't have to be at BD. It can be at Madison Scouts. It can be at the Blue Knights. It can be at Genesis Guardians. Like there's there's cores that are gonna they're gonna find a home. And so it's just Music City. Like it it doesn't have to be at the top. Like you can always start at the bottom and figure out like okay I do like this. Maybe I can figure out okay. I've done I've done this core. Maybe I should start moving up just a little bit more to kind of like feel it out. And so I think that's something I would probably go back and tell myself just to not wait and just to do it. Nice. Nice. Well, looking forward now, uh, what's something you're looking forward to this upcoming 2025 season? Oh, man. Um, I think I'm just excited to see the talent that comes in uh, for auditions for the Blue Coats. Um, I'm looking forward to kind of like seeing where everybody's going to be at after this postseason just just comes just because of the fact that like we're coming off a win and like we know that we shouldn't be thinking about all right how we're going to win again it's again we're just trying to beat ourselves so we were the best blue coats last year how are we going to beat how are we going to be the best blue coats in 2025 and so i'm excited to see who who comes and auditions and like what happens during those auditions and like just to see the talent level rise even more than what we had last year. And so I'm excited to see the vets again and just kind of reminisce on what we just did last year. And so it's exciting and I'm super excited and I hope our staff is really excited to just kind of like put out another great product. And so, yeah. Nice. Nice. What are three things you would tell someone looking to get into the drum corps world? Practice goes a long way, first thing. Um, I think a lot of kids nowadays just feel like, okay, if I practice like, I don't know, an hour, like every week, that'll be fine. It it takes a lot to be in drum corps, like physically, mentally, it's it's a lot. And it constrains on your, on your body just because of the fact that you're moving at like 200 beats per minute for one movement. And it's just like, it's different because most of the time you're going like 120, 140, 160, like maybe 180 in high school. So marching and practicing at faster tempos is way more helpful than you could ever think. Um, I would say that's one, just practice, 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 and practice at higher tempos and just trying to do that consistently. Um, two, I would think is go to the gym, like it, or go on walks, be in the sun. Don't, don't be in your house eating chips on the couch, watching TV. Yes, it can be like, there's some, there's some moments when you can do that, but if you want to do drum core, it's going to take a tax from your body. And so putting yourself in the gym and going to the gym and hydrating and doing those things post or like early season before even like you start audition camps before you even start January, February, March, April, May camps before you even get to spring training. It's, it's going to benefit you no matter how much you do it. And um, somebody that does it really well is Forte athletics. Um, and that group uh, with, I can't remember his name. Um, it'll, it'll come to me here in a bit, <laughs> but Forte athletics, they have an Instagram, like, Go do something like that. It's literally for drum corps and for high schoolers that are like trying to get into drum corps. They have great exercises. They have great muscle building exercises. And it's just building on things that you're trying to do. And so like going to the gym is going to make it super, super easy for you um, when it comes like down the road and you're like doing this every single day for maximum 10, 12 hours a day. And so that's going to help a lot. And then I think going to the auditions, like try, try it. You don't have to like it, but just doing it and finding people that are going to be like, you know, interested in just like doing it. And so, and like talk to people, talk to people about drum corps and like find those people. Like I'm here, like I'll be here forever and ever. And so like, it's just, 
finding people around your area that maybe have marched drum corps before and you're like, oh, maybe I'm a little anxious about this thing. Can you like talk to me about it? Yes, absolutely. And if you find people that don't want to talk about it, maybe that's somebody that's not enjoying the drum corps activity or maybe that are just not as much into it as others. But there are so many people that want to talk about drum corps and so many alumni that want to talk about drum corps and just finding those people and talking to them about it is going to help tremendously just because of the fact that you're going to get the ability to talk to somebody that has smart drum corps that has the uh, experience of like teaching drum corps um, and it's it's just a different perspective of like all right i need this question to be answered okay here's the answer all right now i know what i need to do and so i think those are like my three biggest things of like trying to get into drum corps or like um getting ready for the audition season but yeah Nice, dude. Those are awesome tips. Yeah, I will definitely take those too, because like I said earlier, I'm trying out uh, this for the, yeah, for this upcoming season. Uh, so all those things are cool. I, if anyone listening, like Tony said, Forte Athletics is awesome. I if I'm correct, because I got it a while ago, but they're, they're couple like the first couple courses are free. And then mm -hmm. obviously the more you want, from it you you'll there's a there's a paywall but even just the free stuff that they offer is incredible it helps your body uh like with stretches and i believe even dance some some in there uh obviously just stretches for like specifically uh marching and not like football or soccer or whatever but like specific for your joints Forte Athletics is actually awesome. They are super sick. All righty. Well, I wanted name what's up? Is, the founder is Daniel. That's his name. That's correct. Nice. Yeah. nice. All right. To look all right. Like no, you're fine. You're all good, dude. All righty. Well, uh, last couple question, actually. Uh, is there anyone you would like to shout out? Any staff member, any friends, any family members that has helped you get to where you are today? Yeah, um, definitely my family and uh, my brother, especially. He's a senior going to be uh, starting his freshman year in college soon. And so he thinks he's going to try for drum corps also this season. So trying to help him with that. Um, and just my parents for their support and encouragement of me doing this activity and keeping me in this activity as much as they can. So that helps a lot. And um, the Blue Coats organization, the Alumni Corps, um, they, they're they amazing. And I love each and every one of them. And I mean that so hard, wholeheartedly just because of the fact that I can call that place home now. And so it's very nice. And uh, yeah, super excited to see what 2025 holds. Awesome. All righty, man. Well, we wrap this episode up. Uh, I wanted to ask if you wanted to shout out any social media pages um, or anything you got going on, any plugs uh, that you would like to say. Yeah. Uh, so my Instagram is Tony underscore games underscore zero five. Um, I have just joined a, a company called Silent Command where I give um, 30 to an hour lessons. Um, and that link is in my bio of my Instagram. And so if you're looking for conducting or leadership things or drum corps advice, uh, please go and do that. Uh, and I would be super honored and excited to just kind of share my little things and stuff about drum corps. And so, yeah. Yeah, man. I'll plug those up in the, in the, in the video description on YouTube and on Spotify. Um, so it'll be easier uh, for y'all to find those things, but yeah, guys, alrighty. Well, as we wrap up this episode, I just want to remind y'all to follow that Instagram. That is Owen Talks Drum Corps. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. That is Owen Does Band Things. And then follow on Spotify, which is also Owen Talks Drum Corps. All right, everybody. We'll catch you guys next week. Peace.